Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. This is Sam I B. Angie doing political commentary here for the Media Speaks. Well, the election's over. We got Fukushima and Dunscap out of the way. That means back to the regular show. Uh, back to making sure that Trump keeps his promises. We said that if he got elected, that we were going to go ahead and do our absolute best to make sure that the election was something that was honest, that he upheld his promise in every way. And now we're going to rise to the occasion and make sure that he does. Um, getting into the newer part of the show, uh, post-election, I should say, I got picked up by Blasting News. Got an article in here that I've written for them. I have three of them up. Um, this is the one that I want to get into here. I'm going to go to screen share, and uh, by all means, please go to Blasting News and read it. I'm not going to read it verbatim on air, but uh, I, will, I will get to the nuts and bolts of it. Um, basically, where we are is Trump promised us that he is going to, quote, unquote, drain the swamp, that he's going to take away a lot of the corruption and uh, waste mismanagement that is in government. That's what we keep hearing. That means he needs to keep people like Carl Icahn and not people like uh, Chris Twisty Christy, uh, who has uh, been rumored uh, since this has been published to have been fired for sending an innocent woman to jail because he didn't want to hold up to Bridgegate. That's at least the rumor. Parched, sorry. Um, likewise, I wrote Rudy Giuliani. He keeps being talked about. But let's remember that even though he was America's mayor during the 9 11 attacks, a lot of his ideas have gotten us in a war that we are still in. Ben Carson, likewise, has said the stupidest thing of the entire post election cycle so far. He said that he didn't feel that he was qualified to serve in a official capacity with the president. So what Ben Carson has just said is, even though I was leading in the polls for a while to be president, I am not qualified to serve a president. That's going to haunt him in 2020. Uh, I should have thought about it out of giving him the dumdy of the day for that. So I'm going to go over who I think should be in Trump's administration. And again, this is Blasting News. It's my article they published. Um, name of the article is A Wanted Swamp Drainer Apply at Trump Tower. All right, with that in mind, who should we see Trump choose? Well, the first two names are Ron and, and or Rand Paul. What do you guys think of that? Let me know in the comment line. What do you think about Rand or Ron in the administration? I wrote that it was Ron Paul who himself may not admit this due to differences that exist between him and Trump, of course. Uh, most of Trump's success can be tied to Ron's loyal years of constitutionally rooted service. He brought in a lot of libertarians, and there are a lot of libertarian leanings found within the Trump administration. Both of them are in favor of sound money and are very peaceful. These are two things that Trump has promised us from the very beginning. So also, the position, any position that deals with taxes would be perfect for either of them. Just search Rand Chainsaw. On the internet, if this is doubted, I also I'm always having praise for this man, my favorite member of con uh, Congress, Justin Amash. I said it again, best member of Congress. He is the new Ron Paul. Sorry, Rand Paul, you watered down the message. Uh, he shows this by posting all of his votes on social media, along with why he voted as he did. He always does this. He's the strongest voice for constant or constitutional adherence in all of Congress. And he is that new blood that we were promised. Uh, Trump would be wise to notice this young man. I also said that he would be uh, very, very... Uh, his whole administration would be better off if he were to choose Walter E. Williams. I wrote that he is perhaps the best economic mind extant today. Williams has views that actually would have made him a better leader than Trump himself had he chosen the burden of running. The economy would flourish under Williams. It would be a new face, even though Williams is 80 which might be why he didn't run. And since he has not served in politics prior, he would not be seen as a, the standard fare. 
He is known to many as Russia's fill-in. So many people know and trust the man already. This would be Trump's best option. I stand by that. How about the Supreme Court? Well, I'll tell you who would be a great Supreme Court justice. Hands down, the best option, Judge Napolitano. I write that Trump has promised the man with, that we'd have a man with morals, wisdom, and a constitutional mindset at his choice. These words epitomize Napolitano, who is already well known to America via Fox News. A moderate is anathema to swamp draining, so choosing the judge would be the best way for the Donald to keep his word. Uh, lastly, I write, we keep hearing about Amorosa as a name for press-related posts, and while she is a solid choice, Katrina Pearson would be a smarter choice. How many of you watched her every day and saw how remarkable she did? Uh, no matter what kinds of lie and BS and arrows managed to be flung at um, Donald Trump, she was there and by uh, his side in the media, and she was very, very good at organizing the agenda of Trump and not letting it fall into name calling, not allowing their side to be called racist or sexist or any of the things that were not. She was excellent at all that. And I said, she often explains his stance better than he does. And after all, loyalty and a job well done matter to Trump. That is Hurricane Katrina in every way. She did amazing speaking for him for the last two years, and she should continue in such a role. And then I closed it with this. There are two choices. that There are other choices that many have named, but this is for sure. In order for the swamp to be drained, People who have caused the swamp's rot, like Christie, are not a welcome addition and will only hurt Trump in off once in office. Otherwise, Trump will find that the swamp is on the White House lawn. Then we will be chanting, mow the lawn instead. Friends, that is uh, that is me keeping my promise. Hold Trump's feet to the fire now that the man is in office. Let's make sure he does what he has pledged to do. I'm going to go on to this really quick. This was, uh, remember, remember all the talk about Donald Trump is going to destroy the world? No one's going to trust him. Iraqis welcome Trump's stance on ISIS, but fear it may backfire. And this is from the New York Times. Uh, the gist of this, and I want to scroll down so that you can read it either on fact cam behind me or uh, on screen share. The gist behind this is that Trump is going to be more forceful than Obama was. But that if it's not done with tact, if it's not done smoothly, then ISIS is going to use it as a recruiting tool. That is true. Um, ISIS does need to be eliminated and stopped in order for this to work. If they are allowed to flourish while they're being fought like they have to some degree on and again, off again, when uh, the West has been fighting them so far, then we're going to be in deep trouble. Many Muslims in the Middle East, they write, again, New York Times, reacted with a mix of fear, caution, suspicion, and scorn on Friday to President-elect Donald J. Trump's appointments. However, from Iraq and Syria and Lebanon and elsewhere, a range of people already skeptical about Mr. Trump said their doubts were reinforced by announcements of security positions of Michael Flynn. Yeah, because Michael Flynn's not going to allow radical Islam to flourish. It said, uh, struggling to understand what Mr. Trump's ascent means for them in the war rage nation. Some, however, have expressed that he will confront militant Islamist extremists more aggressively than the Obama administration has done. And like I mentioned, others fear that Mr. Trump's views and his reliance on anti-Islamists in his cabinet <clears throat> will be exploited as a recruiting tool. Well, let me tell you what. ISIS has anti-West people on its team. So maybe it's time for us to realize that there is a problem within certain sects of Islam, just like there are problems in certain sects of any religion. But you don't see radical Hindus going out and bombing people very often. Um, you have those boneheads at the Westboro Baptist Church, but really, I mean, other than being boneheads, they're not hurting anyone. It's common sense, friends. We need somebody who's going to be tough on Islam, but they do have a point. Or not all of it is Islam, of course, but radical Islam, what they can't say in the major media. And they're right. You know, you don't, you don't want to turn off every Islamist. That's also very true, because then you'll end up bringing some of them that would be perhaps on the fence over to the other side. 
But I think if ISIS suffers a crushing enough defeat, that's not going to be the case. Um, this is all brought to you by Sticker Junkie. I've got uh, two stories to get to, but I want to remind everyone that Sticker Junkie here, when you get your stickers at Sticker Junkie, they're going to look amazing. If you have some idea what it is that you want the stickers to look like, let them know, and that's exactly what you're going to get. If you really don't know, then let them come up with something. Whatever you, whatever you decide, you can make your own stickers or they can make them for you. On checkout, let them know. Uh, type in the correct views or the correct views, and you're going to get the savings on them. They already low prices. Look at this, friends. Uh, Yahoo.news, a dollar at the highest since 2003. Oil falls in choppy trade. The dollar's going to crash and America's going to die because absolutely nobody believes in Donald Trump. Nobody believes in Donald Trump. Well, it looks like the U.S. dollar index touched a near 14-year high on Wednesday while oil prices fell in a volatile session as traders were caught between a build in U.S. stockpiles and a chance of an agreement on an output cut. America, flourishing dollar. America, U.S. stockpiles, U.S. craftsmanship and building. Dollar going up. On Wall Street, declines in bank stocks were more than offset gains in technology sector. The S&P 500 had ended Tuesday at a 10-week high. You are going to go to sleep if I read that. The dollar is going through the roof. We are not in any kind of great tailspin because of the election of Trump. We do have this, friends, the dumdy, the dumdy, I say, the dumdy of the day. I still kind of wish I'd have given the dumdy of the day to Ben Carson. No, I gotta be honest, I kind of do. Uh, ben Carson, uh, I was leading in the polls to be president, but I'm not fit to be president myself. I, I've been really busy, friends, I hadn't thought about it. But this person, I'm sorry, you'll find him to be just as much of an idiot. So I mean, don't, don't, don't go away. I promise you, an idiot once a day, and an idiot I will deliver. The next web.com. I'm as far as I know, the next web has never been on the show. So uh, welcome to the web. Oh, this is really interesting. Idiot CEO threatens to kill Donald Trump. Told you I'd promise you an idiot, even in red letters. Threatens to kill the Donald on Facebook and gets fired for it. While, see, I told you, it was dumb. While tech giants from the likes of Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook choose to play it safe when Donald Trump won the election, the CEO of San Diego-based cybersecurity firm PackageSled opted for a different approach and publicly threatened to kill the newly elected Republican candidate on Facebook. So, the understanding left is once again showing how truly peaceful they are. It says, unfortunately, his brash, aggressive burst of frustration swiftly backfired when a series of threats aimed at the president-elect shortly made it to Reddit and eventually appeared on a number of media outlets causing packet sled to place the aggravated CEO on administrative leave. I'm going to kill the president-elect, Matt Herring wrote on a personal Facebook page. Getting a sniper rifle and perching myself where it counts. Find a bedroom in the White House that suits you, MFR. I'll find you, the CEO added. Now, not how do you get to be a CEO and be that stupid? But beyond that, how do you get to be a CEO and not know that you are not going to shoot a bullet through a White House window? Okay, they probably have taken safeguards against that. Call it a hunch. Call it. I don't want you to go out and try it. I'm, ju I'm just saying, call it a hunch. You are an idiot. You shouldn't be the CEO of a lemonade stand. Harrington quickly went on to apologize for his remarks in a statement at Packet Sled's website, downplaying the threats merely as a joke. Then you put JK at the end, at the very least. I'm all for freedom of speech. I always make sure I'm very open when I mail the dust caps to people because I mail them to the FBI and the Pentagon and the White House and everywhere else, that it is not malicious intent involved. It is simply a dissent. 
Here's his boneheaded apology. My recent Facebook comment was intended to be a joke in the context of a larger conversation and only privately shared as such. Anyone who knows me knows that I do not engage in the form of rhetoric with any level of seriousness, and the comment most certainly does not represent my personal views in any regard. You might be a good idea then to add JK. Just kidding. But uh, he apologizes for anything that was either taken seriously or offensive or blah, blah, blah. His apologetic statement has been removed from the Packlet Shed's website. Instead, the company put up a new post notifying the board of directors that they have accepted his resignation. So, a great idea there. And friends, that is the correct views. Uh, do me a favor. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you uh, give to me goes towards a better show. You can donate a PayPal. Any anything helps. I finally got a half decent camera up there at least, but it's uh it's very not what I need. It's uh it's not even HDF. This here is HDF. It's streamed live and it's all blocky because it's streamed live. But you know what? You're getting the facts. You're getting the truth. And uh, you're getting. You get Anthony Weiner on a horse last edition. And what? Anthony Weiner on a horse. Good night, friends. God bless.